Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from cinemasound.com. And we just finished a project where we had been given uh, a whole bunch of tracks. The, the, the tracks that we got were actually uh, really well done. There's layers and layers of sound effects. Ambiences were well done. Uh, the, the, the dialogue was very good. Um, and of course the music had the appropriate stems. The problem was that it had been done in Adobe Premiere Pro, which isn't a problem, but they had done it in such a way that we had to spend four days sorting everything out and getting everything because it was kind of all over the place even when i had asked them please keep things in organized in an organized fashion it was still a mess and i want to cover all of that so that none of because if you make this mistake when you're sending things to the post house the post house is going to charge you more money they're going to complain your project's going to be delayed and they don't charge you a small amount of money. They charge you quite a bit more money because it's days and days that they have to sit there and sort through cl every clip and reorganize it and label and all this other stuff. It's it's unnecessary and you can do it yourself. It's not hard to do. So let's dive into Premiere Pro and I'll show you how to do it. The first thing that we want to do is probably something that needed to happen in the beginning. And that is don't use mono tracks for stereo content. So if you've got a left-right sound effect, don't put that on two mono tracks. That is very difficult to solve and creates a great deal of trouble. Unless you're going into Pro Tools, which you know is fair, but that's not really where you want to start because a lot of people are going to go into Audition, especially if you're in Premiere, or you're going to go into some other digital audio workstation that doesn't like to see dual mono. Pro Tools even now uses stereo tracks much more effectively than it uses dual mono. The old days of dual mono Pro Tools are really over. So if it's stereo, do the due diligence of making sure that the clips that are stereo that you have go on stereo tracks, not on dual mono tracks. Now it's okay to put a mono clip on a stereo track, not great. You end up with kind of mono stereo, much better to put mono clips on mono tracks. And that's gonna require you to do some organization and maybe even some pre-planning saying, look, I'm gonna have 16, stereo sound effect tracks and i'm going to have four mono sound effect tracks just for whatever i might need there for foley remember this foley needs mono you don't want to be doing stereo foley so your foley tracks should all be mono but not don't be doing dual mono stereo if it's dual mono kill one of them and just use the 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 mono foley ambiences should always be on stereo tracks never on dual mono never 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 Dialogue should be on mono tracks. That much you probably already knew. Music, uh, depending on the stem, but if it's a stereo stem, needs to be on stereo tracks. It also helps your processing if it's on stereo because it can do multi-threading in a way that it can't do with dual mono. So uh, Foley mono, sound effects stereo, ambient stereo, music stereo, dialogue mono. And then of course, if you've got any other things that you're doing like burning, uh, reverbs or anything like that. Those are always should be stereo or 5.1, whatever you're doing there. Next, you want to be double sure that you've got all of your clips on the appropriate tracks. We can't just have our clips just willy-nilly all over the place because in audio land, you may not know this, we we have are track based. We're not clip based. We have the plugins that we put on one track. I'll go from one end of the piece to the other. And we want the clips that are on that track to be all of a sort. We want uh, all the gunshots to be on that track. We want gunshot up here and a gunshot down here and a gun up here. And a, gun. a lot of editors who aren't really organized, you can see they'll start up in the top left of something of a, a of their timeline. And then as they continue down, it goes lower and lower and right and right and right. So you have this kind of diagonal down. It's the worst thing. We see it with composers as the same thing. Instead, pre-plan, pre-make your templates. And we have these templates that are available for you at Cinema Sound, where you've got X amount of sound effects tracks that are stereo and some mono, X amount of Foley tracks, whether however many you think that might be. Get a starting place and then start dragging everything that's organized. Like all the weapon stuff should stay on a couple of tracks or however many layers. You know, all the vehicles should be on one. Uh, all the Foley footsteps should be on in organized. Doesn't have to be on one track, but organized into a series of tracks. There shouldn't be a bunch of footsteps here and then a few up here. There shouldn't be a bunch of shirt motion here and then one down here. That they should all be organized. If they're not organized, you're going to be spending money because someone else is going to have to do that. They just can't have it all willy nilly. Your music tracks obviously should have the same the, the same stem list the same track so the french horn track should be there and the bass drum track should be always 
on every cue on the same track. Ambience is, is probably the place where you can get a little loose. It doesn't really matter so much uh, what, there, you know, because ambiences are ambiences. So the only place that you might want to have that organization is if you knew you were going to go into 5.1, have ambiences that are designed for the front to be on certain tracks and those that are in the surrounds to be on the other tracks or height or whatever, have those organized. Dialogue, you know, just uh, keep, keep, it, <laughs> keep it organized actor per room. So our actor per location, or if it doesn't matter that much to you, just keep all one actor on one track, another actor on another track. The exception would be is if you've got some kind of effect like a futz, um, somebody's on the phone, then you would have phone dialogue. And it's okay to leave anything that's an effect on one phone dialogue plugin. So if you put a distortion plugin on the uh, track in Premiere Pro, and everybody that had a futz effect, uh, distortion effect would be on that track, even if it's multiple actors, that's okay, because we tend to treat things that way. If it's an effect, we'll treat everybody kind of the same, especially in dialogue since they're not really moving around. But a futz or a chorus or some other kind of strange effect, that dialogue should not live on the same standard dialogue track. That should come down to some other track that's got an effect and a plug-in, not on the clip, but on the track so that it affects everything that's on there. And that'll help you stay organized when you hear that you've put something on that weird effect track and like, why does that sound that way? Oh, it's on the wrong track. And then you move it to the right place. Don't get crazy about crossfades. In the audio land, we're gonna kind of redo all the crossfades anyway. So you know, don't get delicate about it. Don't worry about a click or a pop in there. We're gonna have to fix all that anyway. Don't worry about that. Also, it's likely that your panning and your volume automation, we're gonna redo. So don't worry about that too much. You can do whatever you want to make it sound good to you. Make your composite so we get a reference, and then we're going to redo it. Don't worry. Labeling tracks is also very, very important. You wouldn't think so because you're like, well, I got the clip names. But I tell you what, when you're scrolling through 100 tracks of stuff, trying to find clip names in a mixer is awful. Don't do this. Spend the time, and if you can, color code them depending on your NLE. It makes it a lot easier. Color code the clips, color code the tracks, makes things a lot easier. Then naturally, when we export we want to export in a format that we know the digital audio workstation can ingest. So if you're going to audition, that's pretty easy. You can just go edit an Adobe Audition and it does a dynamic link. That's pretty great. But if you're going to Pro Tools or Logic or you know one of these other ones, you're going to need to export in a format that they can appreciate. Pro Tools wants to see an AAF file. Fine. No big deal. Premiere does a great job of exporting that. Most NLEs do. Um, but some of the old other applications don't. And they want to see an OMF file. Remember that OMF files are notorious for stripping good information like pan and volume and all these other things out, and all you're going to get is the clips. In that case, you want to make the handles of the files as big, as long as possible. Don't say, you know, one second, say 10 seconds, because sometimes we need to massage your edit points to make it work in the end in a way that you didn't have to make it work, but because we're adding compression and limiting and all this other stuff, we have to make it work. So get those handles as long as possible so that we have maximum flexibility. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. If so, please subscribe to us here at the Cinema Sound, uh, Cinema Sound YouTube channel and come visit us at cinemasound.com where we have hundreds if not thousands of hours of education to help you get that $5 million audience impact into your productions. Come visit us there, and until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're